Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and we're here, and this is going to be week number two of the ICBA. We're up against the Seattle Dragonairs, coached by TD Towers, and uh, this is going to be a really, really tough week. So I had a lot of different thoughts about how I could build this one. This was a very difficult build for me to kind of come up with, but um, I think ultimately this is going to be a really, really interesting one. Okay, so I do see the Ho-Oh, Zero Aura, Galissapod, Latias, this a thing called Gigalith and uh, Zero Aura and Exodro, I believe. Okay, so no Weezing. No Weezing is humongous. No Weezing is humongous. No Lilligant. Wow, no Lilligant actually blows me away. No Lilligant actually blows me away. Um, I I'm kind of mildly thought Garter could come, but I really thought that 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 Galissapod spot should be the Lilligant. That is that blows me away. That blows me away. But it does leave a few of my mons kind of more free here i want to see what i sh um okay so my initial thought was to lead off with with uh this thing and i think i might just go ahead and do that for the time being it still makes a ton of sense to me no wheezing makes it a lot easier to 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 go for that turn one toxic um like i initially planned but yeah i think just wheezing was really strong here um, if for no other reason, then it kind of stops a lot of what my, a lot of what my Groudon wants to do in its tracks. Um, it sets up T-Spikes, which pressures my team quite a bit. Um, and no Lilligan to kind of be the anti-Groudon measure. That is so wildly interesting to me. Yeah, Calissa about Leech, which I thought was possible. But, um, I could get first impression right away, which wouldn't be great, obviously. Um, but let me think here. Let me think here. Oh, I should have, I should have taking a screenshot i could do that now um but it will be a little bit awkward as i kind of uh maneuver things here okay 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 um i mean i kind of want to just get a toxic off here and get this thing kind of pressured early on at the very least um yeah a first impression is going to do a very decent amount of damage but it's ultimately something that i feel like i can kind of deal with here Especially if it goes for a follow-up kind of bug move. I mean, if anything, I can I can maneuver around, try to go into Duraludon here, and just kind of um, waste a few turns, have toxic damage rack up, and kind of um, wear this thing down as much as makes sense for this early game here. Um, but as long as I can stop this thing from kind of just indiscriminately getting up... Um, getting up hazards then i think i'm in as good a position as i can be right i could imagine a leech life here maybe a liquidation goes for a knockoff now that is definitely not great that is absolutely not great but the but the way that i came in here kind of does scream that i do have thunderbolt on this set um i could try to play off of that actually there is no there's nothing at all that stops me from just going for a draco right now there's nothing at all that stops me from going for a draco right now and I think I might. What kind of damage am I looking at with just a straight up Draco here? Duraludon. I mean, the best switch in might be the Gigalith. And, um. On a Fizz Death Gigalith? Uh. Well, Flash Cannon still does more. So maybe it's not the best play. Yeah, this one's tough. I mean, he could. He could expect me to want to go for a Thunderbolt and go into the Zero Aura. It makes me honestly want to collect Draco quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I'd be very curious to see what comes in here. Does go into the Gigalith, which is fine. Um, if for no other reason, then I want that my special attack will drop. Oh, I okay. Um, I guess I guess I'm gonna at least be able to see how specially defensive this thing or how physical how physically defensive this thing is. Um, yeah, that, that does just half. Uh, it looks like it is. It does get a bit dicey with a follow-up flash cannon, but I think I have to just take this, the follow-up flash cannon here. I think I have to just take that damage. It might not do what I need it to do, but um, it should put me in a good enough position. I don't know. I don't know. This is always going to be dicey, but... If there's a chance, then I have to kind of take it here, especially now that... Yeah, okay. Especially now... I was going to say, especially now that my, um... That my scarf is knocked off. But we do take the hit, which is... Which is good. 
That's good for right now. Uh, it does look like Flash Cannon has a chance to not pick up the KO, but he doesn't really have the best switches in regardless. And again, this this thing was mainly here for the Weezing, if nothing else. Um, it's kind of here for some other mons here. Um, it does help a lot against the Galissapod, for example, but I can't imagine wanting to switch anything in here. Um, he does have a, almost a minute on me in terms of the clock. Uh, oh, Galissapod comes in. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Um, he could hit me with a follow-up um, first impression. Which, I mean, ultimately is going to be fine. Um, he could try to spikes me, I guess. But, yeah, just overall things are going to kind of take their toll here. Um, I kind of don't think I can risk the first impression. But, yeah, he's just getting kind of worn down over time. Which is going to be solid for the emergency exit. Um, if he does try to take this opportunity to get up hazards, I can force this thing out with Thunderbolt. But I'd be surprised, yeah, if he, if he doesn't just pick up the KO here. Which is totally, totally fine. And, in fact, um, if I want to take it, it should allow in... Oh, does this pop? No. No, with the leftovers, I think it keeps him out of emergency exit range. Um, It could potentially allow in the Groudon, which would be very interesting. I kind of do want to bring in the Groudon here. Yeah, Groudon gives me the most options, right? Because I'm going to set up rocks, but he has to respect... He has to respect a rock slide play. Um, he could Aqua Jet, but that, but that'll be counteracted by the Drought here. So I think this is just the optimal chance I'm going to get for, for Rocks here, and I think I just take them. I think I just take them. He does go for the Liquidation, I imagine. Um, but also, I'm just trying to think. This for a knockoff. Yeah, this is a very, um, just defensive Groudon here. And the next time this Galissapod tries to come in, it will get emer immediately emergency exited. It could... Well, it could have... Um, what's the word? Uh, it could have... Boots. Uh, I guess I haven't seen it. I mean, it, it, it. It's more likely not than not boots. Which is fine. Um, actually, what is his removal? I think ho is... His, oh, no. Um, Latias is also a bit of removal here. But brings in the ho which is totally fair, but I think it just lets me get off a rock slide. I don't even think I have to think about this one too, too hard. Um, I could potentially miss a move, but I'm not the most concerned about it. Uh, at this point, I'm, I just feel like Groudon kind of gets its damage in, and the goes for the Solar Beam. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's not great, but I think... Ultimately, I'm not trying to win with Groudon, so I think, yeah, we do take it. And if, and if we get a one-for-one one here, then that would be incredible. If we get the one-for-one, one, that'd be incredible, and we do get the one-for-one. One. Okay, amazing, amazing, amazing. So now, what would be the follow-up? Because cause Galissapod is, is in an awkward spot. I mean, Galissapod picks up a KO. Yeah, okay. So really telegraphing the first impression here, and the boots as well. Um, is that anything that I want to play off of? I could go right into this thing and get spikes up as well. Um, I could also potentially... No, I think if anything, what I do here is let this go down. Because this thing shouldn't do anything except... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any more usefulness for my Groudon, so I allow my my Venusaur to get in here. And then once my Venusaur is in here, because the because the biggest threat to my Venusaur was the Ho-Oh. So if I let my 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 Venusaur in here, then uh that just nets me a KO, I think, every time. I should net, net me a KO pretty much every time. Uh, because it allows me to Giga Drain, and he doesn't have any resistance. Well, he has... He has the Latias. He has Latias. Uh, weather, weather Ball isn't even worth it anymore. Yeah, I think this is fine. I think this is fine for now. It's not a great position to be in, but... Uh, yeah, I just pick up a KO here. It's gonna invite in the Latias, but the, I do have the Umbreon... Well... Umbreon's kind of in an awkward position now that it took so much damage. 
but it puts me in an interesting position with vis-a-vis -vis the rest of my team. So I think I'm, I'm still, I think I'm still in an okay position. It's just um, it's just gonna be a matter of not kind of of of, of maneuvering myself well enough that I don't kind of blunder some pieces away here. Uh, as long as I can play the the rest of what I have here carefully enough, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Uh, Latias is the obvious answer. I do get a strong hit off on the Latias, and if it's a setup Latias, brings in the Zero Aura. Okay, that's very very interesting. Um, but yeah, I just feel like I hit this thing right. I feel like I just hit this thing. This thing could be scarfed. To it would be totally fair if this thing was scarfed. Um. Yeah, it does look like this thing is scarfed, which is fine. We do take it. We do take one. Uh, we do get burned, which is fine. Um, but having this thing, having this thing scarfed into Blaze Kick is very interesting because it allows my Umbreon to heal up. It allows my Umbreon to heal up, and the sunlight does fade as well. Um, and I do think this means that I could potentially switch out here. Let me think here. Zero Aura. Let's just say as a band set, but then take away the band. Uh, so let's see here. Against the Umbreon? Blaze Kick shouldn't be doing much at all. And in fact, Blaze Kick lets me get a wish off. As much as I can get a wish off. And then that leaves the Venusaur around to Giga Drain on the Gigalith potentially later on in the match. So I think as long as I have everything thought through correctly. I do, he gets another burn. Okay, that's pretty bad. That's unironically pretty. Oh, but I burn him back. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So now I can just throw up the wish. And then he has to switch out. Or maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just gives this thing up. But I just throw up the wish. And if he does decide to just give the zero aura because he doesn't want to give up damage on anything else, then that honestly puts me in a decent spot regardless. He withdraws the zero aura, goes out into the Gigalith. So now. Well, now I can take out this this Gigalith with a foul play, I believe, um, which it, which it will invite in the Excadrill. It will invite in the Excadrill, but that should honestly allow my my Sand Slash to kind of uh, at least get in some damage onto this Excadrill and kind of threaten it a little bit. But I just hit the foul play. And I should get the wish back. It invites in the Exodrill. And then, which which means that I give up the Venusaur for a clean switch in onto the, onto the Sand Slash. And then, and then Sand Slash is kind of doing its thing a little bit. And as long as I have this thing for the Latios, which is the most important thing, um, then I think I'm okay here. But we're trading off a lot of pieces when really my main plan was to kind of win with, um win with Mew. Um, but I'm putting myself in a really awkward position to kind of win with Mew from, from here on out. Uh, I'm going to try to make it work, but it's going to always be kind of awkward here. But regardless, uh, we're out here to do what we can. The Zero Ore is burned, which is pretty strong for me overall. Extra Door has to be the play, and if Extra Door comes in... Well, if Extra Door comes in... I mean, the fact that he's even thinking about whether or not to bring in Extra Door... Okay, the fact that he brings in this means that it's for sure a setup set, which means... Ugh, oh, what does it mean? Well, now I have... So, so, so the original build on this had Yawn on it, specifically for a sub-setup Latias. Um, so I have to baton fast, I have to get in my Mew, and I have to try to win with Mew right now. Goes for a Draco right away, wow! So that definitely allows in my Mew. Now my Mew is definitely in here. Um, and I really have to think about how to play this. I really have to think about how to play this. 
Because all he has left is this. The... Yeah, wow. I'm blown away by that play. I'm blown away by that play. Is it? Is it? Would, would it be worth it to get up spikes? I don't think it would be. I think I just make this play and try to win out here. Yeah, I'm blown away by that play. He could have toxic, and toxic would be kind of the worst possible thing that could happen here. Um, but I think I just take the opportunity to cut to. Cl mm, maybe it's not. Maybe, maybe I feel it out with Venusaur. If he has a Toxic, it wouldn't matter. I guess it doesn't matter either way, but this is such an optimal chance to get behind a sub and to get up some Cosmic Powers. Oh, this is a rough call. This is a really rough call. Could this thing have Toxic? Well, if it has Toxic, then I lose anyway, right? I think I just don't win if it has Toxic. Um... I'm going to click Cosmic Power. If it has it, it, it has it, but I think it's going to be... Okay. Okay. Goes right into the end of the Exit Drill. But, um, I made this... I made this me specifically so that, um... So that at plus two, I, 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 I think, I think, um, just an adamant, just a regular adamant Exit Drill has like an 18% chance to, to break a sub. If uh, Again, if I'm at plus two. So I'm gonna take that chance and I'm gonna go for it with Mew here. Goes for a sword dance, okay, that's pretty bad. I came, re I came incredibly close. I came incredibly close to bringing a, a an iron defense Mew, but I didn't. But if I'm at plus two defense, then stored power is not doing a whole heck of a lot. I have to continue to cosmic power. And I have to hope that it gets me somewhere. Extra draw goes for a sub. Um, when I'm at plus four, plus four? No, I have to be at plus five, plus five in order for um, sword power to become a 2 KO. But I am at the point where I do kind of have to break subs. Uh, or at the very least, just not let it run wild with, um, with, with, uh, swords dances. So I have to start to kind of deal damage here. I think, I believe I'm a plus two, right? I'm, I may be a plus three. I'm, I think I'm a plus two, though. I'm gonna very quickly check, but... Uh, this thing potentially just wins right here, right? Um, unless I play this remarkably carefully. But yeah, uh, uh, unironically, if this thing had body press, I think I just win on the spot. Um, which is a little bit unfortunate because I, I did definitely think about that line. Uh, I am a plus three, so I'm a plus three, plus three. Which is still a 2 KO from this range, in, um, importantly enough. And this is the final turn of Sandstorm. So we'll be faster uh, this turn onwards. And he can't 2 KO me, so I think I should be okay. Because I think I just clicked Stored Power twice, and I don't think he can do anything to really stop that. There's the Earthquake, and after this turn, I will be faster! Was that a crit? Was that a crit? It was a crit! That... That plus four... Yeah, Earthquake should never KO me. Earthquake should never KO me in that situation. Okay. Sand Slash potentially takes a hit, but it doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter. I KO, and then on the next turn, I... Or, or, or sorry, I, I, I do half. On the next turn, I KO... And then, yeah, that's rough. That's brutal. I'm going to lose this one on that crit, but 
I don't think he had any outs out after that. I don't think he had any outs. Uh, last in the back was a Burn Zero Aura and a Latias that I could that I could always sub on the Draco. Oh, that crit just is not great. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, I really can't complain after after week one, but just because of kind of the tempo of this match and how this and, and how I kind of um felt about this match I felt like I had every tool that I needed to kind of make things happen here but that crit uh, again I really cannot complain it, it, it sucks even thinking about complaining when week one happened the way that it did but uh I'm just I'm just blown away I'm just blown away I really thought that I had all the tools um I'm, I'm gonna definitely have to ask him what kind of a lot of that is but with near certainty, I think two, I think two um, sword powers should have been able to, to 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 do what I needed to do after the sub, and then from there, uh, I'm just doing what I need to do. Yeah, that's a rough one, uh, but I guess, but I guess that's how it's drawn up. Good game to to TD Towers. Um, it's definitely not the way that I wanted it to happen, but like I said, I I really can't complain. Um, it was a lot of fun. It's also definitely not kind of a Mew set that I'm generally comfortable with, but I felt like um, it had, an, had a chance here, especially because he just straight up didn't have a, a dark type. He didn't have any type of um, really things to stop the Mew, except the Latios in particular. But seeing how willing the, the, the Latios was to kind of drop Dracos made me feel like I would be able to freely sub in front of it, or at the very least, you know, I'd, I'd be a plus three from Cosmic Powers. So I was always going to be in a good position, I think, but it's just the kind, it's just the way that these things kind of go, I guess. With that, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the ICBA as well as weeks of the UBL. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Watch, gonna be once again out.